Keycloak is an open source authentication service. So what it means is it allows you to implement authentication and access control related services in your web application. Now, there are other auth providers in the market like Auth0 and Okta, but these are paid services, whereas Keycloak is open source as in it's completely free. The other thing about Keycloak is it's self-hosted, whereas Auth0 and Okta, these are hosted on their own servers. So when you integrate uh, Okta or Auth0 in your web application, you route the user to their servers where the authentication happens and after that the user is redirected back to your servers. So Auth0 and Okta takes care of authentication on their own servers whereas with Keycloak when you if you choose to implement it you have to run it on your own uh, servers. It might look like a lot of work but it's really not. It's quite easy to set up and it's quite easy to configure. So in today's video I'm going to show you how to set up Keycloak and how to configure it and we're also going to see a demo where we integrate it with a React app. Generally, when we talk about auth services, we only think of login and logout, but there is so much more to it. Generally, these auth services fall into a domain called identity and access management. And within identity and access management, there are several branches like authentication, authorization, user administration, and, and so on and so forth. So, the reason I'm discussing these points is because Keycloak allows you to do all these things within your application. So that, that makes it really, really powerful. So let's explore each of these, you know, let's explore what these services are. So authentication is quite easy to understand. Uh, it just talks about login and logout and session management and single sign on. And you must be familiar with these terms and social media integration. So what is social media integration? You must have seen some websites where you can sign up with your Google account and log in to the application and access it without having to create any new ID. So that's what social media integration is. So Keycloak allows you to integrate Google or Facebook or Twitter uh, into your application. So the user, this allows user to log in to your app using the using Gmail or Twitter credentials. So that makes it really convenient for the user, right? They don't have to create any new ID or remember any new password. So it's quite, it, it makes it convenient. Next is user management. So Keycloak gives you an interface to manage the users, as in you can perform all the user administrative related tasks using the interface, like creating the user or deleting the user or exporting the users. All it doesn't it doesn't allow exporting users, but there's a workaround which we'll discuss in this video. But yeah, I mean it does give you an interface to sort of manage the users. Like you can set the password expiry time, or you know, you can reset the password or give a temporary password and allow the user to change it to whatever they want. So yeah, all these things come under user management. Now, speaking of authorization, a lot of users get confused between authentication and authorization. So authentication only deals with login and logout, whereas authorization is, is uh, describes what the user can see or cannot see in your application and what the user can or cannot do in their application. So we achieve uh, this by assigning roles to the user. So, Generally, when you're creating a platform, not every user is the same, right? You might have an administrator who needs elevated access or you have just have someone who's just subscribing and you know, he just want to explore the content. So they might need limited set of access. So we achieve this segregation of duties, SOD stands for segregation of duties, by assigning different roles to the user and thereby restricting what they can and cannot do on your platform. Last one is central user repository. It just uh, means, you know, you can centrally manage your users. It's not that relevant, but yeah, because Keycloak is self-hosted, you can run it on your own server and you can integrate it with all the applications that you run within your ecosystem, right? You might have, you might just have one web service or you might provide different services. So you can centrally manage all the users. That way the user can use a single uh, credential to log in across all the platforms. So it, it makes it really convenient. All right. Uh, that's a brief uh, summary of identity and access management. Now let's get into the technical. So I'll show you how to uh, spin up a Keycloak server. We're gonna use Docker to spin up the Keycloak server. If you don't have Docker installed on your machine, maybe watch some other video, get it set up, and then come back to watching this video. Also, you don't need to be an expert in Docker. I'll try to break down the commands that I use and make it as simple as possible. All right, uh, to spin up the server, we just need to run this single command. That's it. So let me break break it down. So what this command does is it downloads the Keycloak image from Docker Hub, and then we set certain parameters like the admin ID, account and admin ID password, 
and we also do a port mapping because docker runs on its own virtual os we have to do a port forwarding so we map the adad port on our machine to the adad port of the docker container and that's it i'm going to change the port though i don't want to run it on adad i want to run it on my own custom port maybe i'll try 4000 uh, but yeah that's it so let me copy this command go to your vs code terminal do a right click let me change the port to 4000 and i'm also going to run this command in detach mode so detach mode frees the terminal that way you know i don't have to keep this terminal open while key clock is running that's it hit enter you can see that the image does not exist on my laptop so it's downloading from docker hub and once the download is complete it'll spin up the key clock server with the ids admin and password also admin That's it. Because we ran this command in detached mode, after all the steps are done, the terminal is freed up. If you open Docker Desktop under Containers, you will see the Keycloak instance running, and if you click on it, you can see all the logs. But yeah, it is running. If you open Port 4000 on your machine, you will see the Keycloak interface. First, we need to log in to the admin console. The username is admin and password is also admin. And then we'll see this interface. There are so many options. We'll look at each of them in detail later in this video. The first thing to do is create a new realm. When you log in for the first time, you will see the master realm by default. And realm is nothing but a grouping for all your settings. And it's advisable not to change the settings in the master realm. Instead, create a new realm and configure all your settings there. The reason it's designed this way is because let's say you have uh, two different applications and you want one app to have certain settings and the other app to have a completely different all settings. So in that case, instead of creating two different key clock servers, you could have just one server but have two different realms, thereby you know isolating the settings to their own uh, application. So yeah, first let's create a realm. I'm going to call it my realm. And after we create the realm, we need to go to clients and we need to create a new client and I'll do a demo shortly where we'll create a react app and connect to this realm and I'll show you the authentication and in that app we connect to the new realm that we created and we also need a new client so create a client and call it my client and next yeah just just click on save that's it so all we did here is login, create a new realm, and also create a new client. There are so many other settings, but there's no point in me talking about it right now. Instead, what I'll do is I'll implement a basic authentication, and then I'll show you how these configurations affect that login page. Okay. Yeah. All right, now I'm going to create a simple React app that connects to Keycloak server for authentication. I'm going to use Vite to create the React app. I'll give the project name as Demo Keycloak. And I'm going to use React, JavaScript, hit enter. Now let's go to the Demo Keycloak server. First, install all the dependencies. I'm also going to install a package called Keycloak.js. We'll use this package to handle the authentication. That's it, let's start the server. All right, this is the standard Vite React template. I'm going to delete all the unnecessary files and modules. All right, now that everything is cleaned up, let's start with the code. I'm going to create two folders, one to host all the components and one to 
create the hook. We're going to create a hook called use auth and we'll handle all the key cloak related functionality inside that hook. We'll create two components inside this folder. One is public, the other one is protected. The names are uh, self-explanatory. The user, when not logged in, sees the public page and after login, sees the protected page. I'm creating a, inside this use auth hook, I'm creating a state called is login to keep track of the user login status. In the app module, we'll import all these uh, components that we just created. And like I said, when the user is logged in, we'll show the protected route. If not, we'll show the public uh, page. As you can see, we are seeing the public page because the default state is set to false. If I set it to true, you should now see the protected page. So that works well. Let me change it back to false. And now let's implement the key cloak related functionality. We only want to run this user effect once when the component first loads. So the dependency array is set empty. When we instantiate key cloak instance, we need to pass certain options. So we need to pass the URL and uh, realm and the client ID. Remember, we just created the realm and client ID, right? We need to pass these parameters here. So I can write the values here, but that's not the right way to do it. Instead, I want to create an environment variable, put in all the values there, and then, then, and then import them here. So the first one is the key cloak server. Earlier, when we sp spun up the server, we were running it on the 4000 port. So that's the link. And then my realm, that's the realm ID. And then my client, that's the client ID. After we create the environment variables, we need to restart the servers for these to take into effect. So I'm going to stop the server and st start it again. That's it. Now if I go to use auth, okay. now let's import all the environment variables. After, instan after instantiating client, we need to run the init method with the option login required that mandates authentication whenever the component loads, which is an async function that returns the auth state. So let's do that. The way this works is if the user is not logged in, then the user is redirected to the key clock server for authentication. And after that, he's returned back and then it returns the auth state, which we are setting here. If the user is already logged in, then it will not redirect. It will just simply return the auth state, which again, we set it here. So that's how we handle authentication. It's really simple, right? Now, when we go back to the page, you can see the redirect happened, but it says invalid redirect URI. So I left this bug intentionally so that I can show you how to configure this setting in the realm. So now go, go back to your key cloak server. And if you go to the clients, okay, I think I logged out, I need to log in again. Go to my realm, yes, my realm, and go to clients and my client if we scroll below we need to specify the valid urls here only auth requests coming in from these urls are accepted so valid yeah valid web origin yes now click on save now let's try again awesome so now you can see uh, this worked so we need to set now, this is like a security feature, right? We don't want any app to connect to our key cloak servers. We only want our applications to connect. So that's how we enforce this restriction. All right, so now that we have everything set up, we'll look at the different key cloak settings and how they affect this login page. All right, uh, now that we set up the application and connected it to key cloak, let's see how we can customize the screen and how these different configurations affect the login page okay first you can see on the top you see the project name here and let's say i want to change the project name to something else so if you go to realm settings and you have an option called html display name if i change it to let's say atom and save it that updates the project name here now if we go to the site and refresh the page you can see that it's changed to atom so you can set the project name or you know any name of your choice here to update the login page also if you look at the page you don't have an option to uh, register or forgot password and all the stuff you only see an option to sign in right so again it depends on your project requirement right let's say you 
don't want to allow the users to sign up right you only want to you want to create the users in house and only give access to those users but let's say you want to make it open right let's say you want to enable sign in so you, you do it by going to login again realm settings login and let's say you turn on user registration right now let's see what happens if we go back to the page refresh the page you see there's an option to register now so that's good so yeah there are so many customization customizations here that you can you know toggle to customize the screen so let's look at each of them uh, i'll try to cover as much as possible but yeah it's 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 heavily customizable so let's say you have it turn on this option forgot password right so this allows you to this you see this gives you an option to reset your password and what else do we have here so yeah remember me yeah now you can save your password in the browser yeah so that, that's pretty neat what else do we have uh, email as username so let's say uh, you want the username and email to be the same and you don't want to differentiate them then you can turn on this option so doesn't yeah you can now it just earlier you might have seen here username and email now it now it just says email so yeah that's it what else uh, yeah if you go to the email tab uh, this is again now this email section is helpful if you want to enable some kind of email functionality in keycloak so let's say when the user signs up or uh, you you have turned on email verification as mandatory right in that case you want to send out an email after the registration asking the user to uh, you know verify their account uh, so in that case you need to set up your smtp server here then you can change some settings here like from from email address display name and all that stuff so this is applicable for email options i need an smtp uh, server to be able to show you this i don't have it at this moment so i won't be able to cover this but yeah i mean most of these options are pretty self explanatory okay then you can go to themes so here you can customize this theme so there are just two themes available if i select the base version and save it looks pretty bland let me refresh this you see it it looks pretty like it looks like all the css is taken away so yeah let's turn it back to keycloak click on save yeah now it looks now the previous uh, styling is restored so yeah keys let's see what we have okay so we'll talk about keys later in this video when i show you how to uh, restrict access to your routes on the backend server so more on this later events uh, again localizations i've never used it uh, security defenses yeah let's say you want to put some headers right on your uh, api calls then you can do it here sessions yeah this is useful so how long do you want the session to be active after authentication right so those kind of settings you can configure here so there's that and tokens yeah we don't same thing about the tokens right so under the hood keycloak uses json web tokens to handle the authentication so you can configure the lifespan of these tokens over here so th these are a bit too technical so i don't want to get into the details uh, but i'm giving you a high level overview okay client policies yeah okay user registration that's it okay so that's pretty much it so so yeah this is how you can customize the login page now that we saw how we can customize the login page using these settings let's try to create a user and login to the application i'm going to create the user first from the admin panel so go to the user section and click on create new user so let's create a user called uh, yeah satoshi@bitcoin.com give the first name as satoshi last name as nakamoto and uh, you can select different actions but yeah we'll just leave it blank for now and click on create we also need to give a temporary password for the user to log in and let's go to credentials and set password make it temporary the temporary option is turned on and i'll set the initial password as 12345 click on save yeah set password awesome so let's the user is now created if you go to the users tab you will see this user now go to the login page enter the email address and set the initial password click on sign in awesome so you are now prompted to change your initial password so that's the beauty of keycloak right you can set an initial password and we can make the user change their initial password so if you were to do it yourself you would have to write a lot of code to handle this but because we're using keycloak the whole process is simplified for us so i'll set the initial password to 123456 click on submit after we enter the password you are 
logged into the application, but you can see that the page keeps refreshing, right? If I just refresh this, you can see that the page keeps on refreshing. And if I stop it, if you notice carefully, you will see the state and session state in the URL. So that means the login is successful, but for some reason, our application is not able to retain the login state. The reason this is happening is because of the way uh, use effect works under strict mode. If you go to main.jsx, you can see that it runs React is running in strict mode and there's an issue with use effect in strict mode. So what happens is in strict mode, there's, there's, there's been a change in the React version 18, I believe, where use effect runs, runs twice. So we have to, uh, this piece of code runs twice, uh, which is not what we want. So we only want to make it run once. So we do that by using a use ref. So I'll just call it use ref. I'm going to use use ref hook to achieve that. Uh, I'm going to create a reference variable called is run. I'll set the default value to false and inside use effect, I'll check the value of is run. If the value is set to true, I'll just return. If not, I'll set it to true and then uh, the rest of the code is executed. So the way this works is first time it's run, the value is still false. So it comes to this line, the value set to true, the whole code runs and next time when it tries to run again, because the value is true, it just returns. It doesn't execute the rest of the code. So that's how we prevent use effect from running twice. Awesome. So you see the protected page. So that means you are logged in now. If you go to the key cloak panel, if you go to clients, uh, go to my client, under the sessions tab, you will see all the active sessions. So these are all the users who are currently logged into your application. So again, this is again the power of key cloak, right? If you, let's say you want to kick some user out of your application, you can just click on uh, sign out and the user is forced to log out of your application. So if you go back to the page and hit on refresh, you will be redirected back to the login page. Awesome. So it works. So if you go to the users, yeah. Now let's do one thing. Let's try to, instead of creating from the admin panel, Let's try to register a user from here. Click on register and I want to create a user called Sam and last name is Bankman. And let's put the email as sambankman at uh, gmail.com, whatever. And set the password to 123456. Click on register. So you will see the protected route. So the reason this is happening is because key cloak immediately after registration it logs you into the application. So that's why you're seeing the protected route. So you are logged in as Sam Bankman right now. If you go to clients and again, my client, you can, you can see it over here. So under the sessions tab, you can see Sam is logged in. You can just log out here. And if I refresh this page, you will be redirected back to the login page. Awesome. Yeah. There is one other thing that I wanted to show you. So we have been looking at all these different customizations under the Realm tab, right? There is also another customization under the authorization tab, sorry, authentication tab. If you go to policies, here you can customize your password policy. So let's say you want to make the password to a minimum of certain characters, or you want to have special characters, uppercase, and all that stuff. So you can, you can set it over here. So if you select this dropdown, you have different options to customize. So let's say a minimum length, I want eight, minimum eight characters length. So that's it. And I want to put in uppercase, where is uppercase? Yeah, uppercase, at least two uppercase or one uppercase, whatever. And I want to have special characters, like how many number of special characters you want to have in your password and click on save. So this policy is automatically enforced through this section. So let's try to create another user. So click on register and let's say, uh, read Chuck Norris chuck norris at gmail.com and i want to set the password to one two three four five six right this should stop me if i click on register uh, we get an error that the password should at least have one special characters right so i'll say say at the rate whatever one two three four c at the rate one two three four now it will fail it because it doesn't have 12 characters right so click on do we have 12 characters your minimum eight characters i think it should fail click on register it should at least have one uppercase. So it, it's doing all these validations for us. So we don't have to write any client side code or any of that stuff to make this validation. Keycloak handles it for us. So that is what makes it so convenient for developers. And yeah, that's the beauty of Keycloak.
there is one last thing that I wanted to show you. I deleted the password policies to make it easier for me to show you. Uh, that is the uh, two-factor authentication. Yes, Keycloak does support two-factor authentication and we can enable it during registration. So the way to do it is go to required actions and there's an option called configure OTP. So it's not turned on by default. So you have to make it a default action. So when you click it, it turns it, it makes it default. So if you go back to the login page and register, every time a new user tries to sign up, the user is prompted to configure two-factor authentication support. So let's let's try that. Let's try to register a new user, right? Let's say Caroline Ellison and Caroline at red alameda.com. And let's set the password, right? 1234, whatever, 1234, and click on register. All right, so now you will get this two factor authentication code scanner. So let me try to set it up on my phone and scan QR code. Got it. So the code is. 597180 and let's call it Firefox. Yeah, click on submit. You see the protected route. So every time I log in, let, let's let's try that, right? So if you go to clients and uh, every time I log in, I now have to enter the two-factor authentication code. So I want to test it out. So let's log out, Caroline. Let's copy this. Sign out. So if I go back to the page, refresh. Uh, go back to the login page and one, two, three, four, click on sign in. So see, you're now prompted to enter the two-factor authentication code. So yeah, it works as expected, 428. And only then will I be redirected to the application. So perfect. So we looked at all the customization settings and we looked at the password policies and also how to turn on the two-factor authentication. All right, uh, so far we've looked at how to secure the front end side of things. We've looked at uh, the customizations on the login page and two factor authentication and so on and so forth. Now let's look at how to secure the back end server. Now the concepts that I'm about to discuss are slightly advanced. You need to have an understanding of Node.js and Express Server to proceed further, but I'll try my best to explain things and keep it as simple as possible. Now, if you're familiar with Node.js and Express Server, you know that securing an application is not just about securing your front end, but also securing the routes that you offer in your backend server. Now, you can secure your routes using Keycloak. If you go to Realm Settings and go to Keys, here you can access the public key of the of this realm. So you can use this public key to restrict access to the routes and also tailor the content of the route to the login user. Before we go ahead and delve into the code, I want to take some time explaining how the private and public key works. So private key is used to create a token, whereas public key is used to verify the token. So in this case, there's a public key and private key mapped to this realm, but Keycloak doesn't reveal the private key to us. We don't need to know the private key. Uh, the less we know, the better, because the way this works is whenever a user logs in, Keycloak takes the private key and it creates a token for us. And then in the backend server, we can use this public key to verify the token. Now, the token that got generated, no other private key can generate the token. Only the key that's mapped to this realm can generate this token. So that way, we can be sure that if the token is valid, that means the user did log in to the application. So that, that validates the authentication side of things. And then using the public key, we can verify two things. We can verify if the token is expired or not. So if the token is expired, that means we force the user to log in. We also get the user that the token is created for. So that way we can take the user ID and tailor the content of the route to that particular user. I hope it makes sense. If not, don't worry about it. Once we implement the code, all of this is going to make sense to you. I'm just going to set up a very basic express server. I'm not going to explain too much because it's going to take a lot of time. So I'll quickly create a simple express server with a route that returns some documents. Okay, let's get going. All right, I've just created a simple uh, backend server and uh, 
I started the server using NodeMon so that whenever I make changes to the code, it's automatically restarted. And let's now create the Express server. As you can see, the Express server started on port 5000. Now let's create the route. Okay, I just created this route called documents that returns some documents that I just stored in an array. Ideally, you would be getting documents from a database, but to keep it simple, I'm just returning the data from this uh, variable. As you can see, the route works. We're able to see the data when we call the API. Now let's go to the React app and pull in this data. I need to install a package called Axios to uh, make the API call. So let me just install it. I'm going to start the server again. I'm going to use use effect to implement that API call and we also need use ref to make sure that use effect only runs once just like we did before. For now I'm just calling this API and just logging the data onto the console. Let's see if this works. I need to log in to test this. See protected, let's open the console. As you can see, there's an error, right? So our React app is running on port 5173, whereas our backend server is running on port 5000. We need to specify the proxy connection so that the API calls go through 5000 port. So let's do that. We specify the proxy through the weed config file in the React app. What this means is whenever we use the documents route, the API calls are forwarded to this URL. So that means you can have different routes using different uh, URLs. So that's the beauty of weed, right? You can configure multiple proxies for the same app. So that's really convenient. Now let's close this. Let's go back to the app and hit refresh. Looks like I need to restart the server to take this into effect. Let's, let's go back to the server, hit refresh. Awesome, so that works. So we now see the data logged to the console. Now what I want to do is instead of logging the data to the console, I want to show them on the screen. You'll understand in a short while why I'm implementing it this way. So let's first uh, show these values on the UI. Great, so now you can see the data being displayed on the UI. Now what I want to do is instead of showing the standard records for all the users, I want to assign different records to different users and depending on which user had logged in, I want to show the records that are pertaining to that user. So this is how we do it. So whenever we log in, uh, Keycloak generates a token for us. So in the React app, first thing to do is get that token and then we need to include that token in every API call. And in the backend server, we will extract the token and identify if the token is valid and whether the user has logged in. And then we provide the content that's specific to the user. So let's do it. So the first step is to get the token. We're gonna go to the use auth hook that we created and extract the token. So that's it. So we created a new state for the token and after the login, we assigned the token and we updated the return state. So instead of just returning login, we're returning the token and the login. And in the main app module, uh, we're passing the token to this protected module. And here we are passing the token with the API call. Now there's a better way of doing it instead of uh, 
drilling down the props you can have some kind of centralized state management but yeah because this is a simple react app i just want to quickly get it done with now if you go to the api call that we did and if you go to the request headers you can see we have included the authorization bearer space the token so here is where you can see the token now let's go to the backend server and implement the authentication as in you know decoding the token and identifying which user it is i need to install a package called json web token to handle the authentication so let's install and restart the server inside the routes i'm going to create a file called authenticate and here is where i'm going to implement the functionality for authentication i'm going to use it across all the routes So for now, I just want to log the token to the console. So let's import this authenticate module and include it in the route. Since this is a middleware, we can just pass it along with the route. So, so whenever the API hits the server, it first goes through this authenticate code block and only when it's successful, it goes through the documents, uh, the route where we provide the documents. So let's go back to the page, hit refresh. Now let's go to the console. Awesome, so you can now see the token that is logged here. Now we need to decode the token. So for that, we need the public key. So let's get that. Go to Realm Settings. Keys. We need the RSA public key, RSA 256. Yeah, just click on public key, copy this. And I'm going to pass it through environment variable. This is the format to properly store public key. So I just pasted it. Uh, we're getting the public key from this environment variable. Now we need to decode the token using the public key. So this is how we decode the token. So earlier, remember we took the public key of RS256. So that's the algorithm we are passing here. And let's log the decoded value to the console and see what happens. Refresh the page. So this is the decoded value. Let me expand this section a bit. So this is the decoded value. You, you have all this information available. And what we're interested in is the email address, right? So you can see the email is sambankman at gmail.com. And this is how we identify the user that's logged in, okay? If the token was obsolete, this verify step would have failed. So that's how we fail the authentication and we force the user to log in again. But yeah, now that we have the decoded token, let's assign uh, the username to request.user and then in the document section we will have access to the username and then we can tailor the content to the user that's logged in we need to call next so that uh, the code then moves on to this documents section where we uh, provide the documents now here, let's try that. Now let's get the email address here. So constant email is equal to request.user. Again, let's console log the value. Let's refresh this page. Awesome, you have this email address here. So now let's create some documents for each user. So similarly, let's create uh, some more records for Carolyn. That's it. So now that we have different records for different users, let's update this API to provide the data that's specific to the user that's logged in. It's quite simple. So instead of just sending the data, we just send data of email. That's it. Save. We go back to the UI and I just hit refresh. So yeah, I think this is what we see for Sam. So if we go to the key cloak and in the user section, Sam, let's log him out. Uh, sessions, yeah, let's log out. And if I log in, now we see the documents for Sam. If I log in as Carolyn, hit refresh. Let's log in as Carolyn. Awesome, so you now you see the document, see a different set of documents, right? These are for Carolyn. So, the UI looks a bit crude, but you get the point, right? This is how we implement authentication in the backend server and tailor the content of the route specific to the user that's logged in.
Finally, I want to show you how to take a backup of Keycloak server. Most likely you'll be running Keycloak on some kind of cloud provider like AWS and in worst case scenario, if the AWS region goes down, your server would crash and you would lose the data. So it's a good practice to take a backup. There is a drawback in Keycloak in that it doesn't allow you to take a complete backup. So let's look at the standard way to take a backup from the admin panel. So if you go to Realm settings, under action, there's a button called partial export. When you click this, you can select uh, things that you want to include and hit export. So here in this export, it includes the realm settings, groups, roles and groups and clients. Hit export. Yeah, it takes an export. The drawback with this approach is, you know, it doesn't include users, right? So this is a big risk, right? You need to take a backup of users, right? You cannot afford to lose this. One workaround for this is when you start the Keycloak server, there is an option to connect Keycloak server to a dedicated database like Postgres. We didn't do it in this uh, tutorial because I want to keep it simple, but ideally it is recommended to have a dedicated database that makes the Keycloak server stateless. And even if it goes down, the users are still stored on the dedicated database. But what if you're running it in this mode, right? And you still want to take a backup. Well, there is a workaround. Uh, it took me about a week to figure out. There's no proper doc documentation on how to do it. But yeah, I'll show you the workaround. So to take the backup, we need to go to the key Docker container and go to the terminal. Go to the OPT folder, key clock, bin. And here you have the Keycloak shell script. So we're going to use the script to do the export. So this is the command to take the export. I leave this command in the description. I want to change the file name to all users. And we just, we give this flag same file so that all the users are exported into the same JSON file. So hit enter. It takes a few seconds to do the export. That's it. Now let's go to the folder. Yeah, you see this file, all users.json. So that's the exported file. Now we need to bring it out of the Docker container. Now to bring that file out of Docker, we can use the Docker copy command. And for that, I need to know the container ID. So we can get it by running the command Docker PS. That gives me the container ID. Now the command to copy is Docker copy and then the container ID. and colon and first we specify the source path and then we specify the destination path just want to give the file name as well and hit enter so you will see this all users.json file here and you can see all the users exported from all the realms so we know that the default realm is masters. So you will see the users in master realm and also the realm that we created. Importing the users is really easy. Let's delete all the users, right? So delete users. Yes. So now we don't have any users. So importing is really easy. Go to realm settings, click on partial import and let's select the file and choose three users, hit on import. That's it, close. We go to users the users are back and they are created with the same password as before. So that's it. So that's how you take a backup of users and import them back in the event of a crash. There are a few things that I couldn't cover in this video, like using roles and groups to implement some kind of access control and also social media integration. If you go to identity providers, you can see that you can integrate Google or, you know, so many social media platforms into your web app directly. So this is another thing that I couldn't cover in this video. It's already quite long. So let me know if you want me to cover these topics. I'll try to make a video. That's it for this video and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye.